Come from inside the house. Ah! Happy Halloween, everybody. It's me. Oh, should have rehearsed that, I guess. That's why. <laughs> Smooth beginning of the show. How are you, folks? Love Halloween. You know, I get to scare the shit out of three-year-old girls. I'm going to answer the door of my robe open. It's going to be fucking great up in here. <laughs> what is going on, folks? Uh, welcome Thursday, the end of another week. Unfucking believable Hey, how about a congratulations to the Washington Nationals, who unfucking believably won the World Series last night. Do you understand these guys were facing the brink of elimination six times, counting last night, I think? in this postseason, and they overcame all. They were down in the eighth inning in like five of those uh, situations, and they won the goddamn World Series against a killer Astros team, El Choco. And I blame the goddamn manager for not leaving in Greinke, who was, you know, once again, managing by the book. Greinke's uh, thrown a perfect game through four or five innings, and, and, and then uh, gives up a homer, and they, you know, they don't bring in Garrett Cole. They bring in some other mamaluke who gives up a homer. And but the Nats would just never say die. You got to hand it to them. That was an, they, you talk about a well-earned World Series championship. Not quite as well earned as when the Red Sox came back from down three games to the New York Yankees in 2004. But uh, unbelievable, Nats, unbelievable. Congratulations, DC. It's the only thing good in your city. Too bad it's canceled out by the Adam Schiff's of the world and fucking AOC's. Anyways, uh, what the hell else? Uh, speaking of Halloween, um, this poll sort of bugged me, and it shows where we are in, uh, in this country and why college kids are so retarded. Majority of students want punishment for uh, offensive costumes. Can you fucking imagine? More than half of American university students, this is after I defended you people, support punishment for their peers who wear highly offensive Halloween costumes. That is unbelievable. Half drunk and stupid is no way to go through life. A recent poll by the College Pals found that more than half the students do not believe that dressing in offensive costumes is protected free expression and support the notion that those who partake in such costumes should be punished Okay, congratulations, lefties. Congratulations, Liz Warrens and Bernie Sanders and AOCs of the world. Congratulations. You've got a whole generation just as retarded as you are. Just what is fucking more American than free expression, free speech? Can you, Halloween costumes. Fucking Halloween costumes. So what's the punishment, huh? If I dress up like a Mexican with a tequila bar, what do you think the punishment should be? You pussies. You fucking pussies! Are these millennials? I think there's already a generation after millennials. I don't even know. I, I was defending millennials yesterday. I don't know. I'll Google it when I take this show seriously. <laughs> Which will be fucking never. Ah, uh, God help us. This year we're going to grab the bull by the balls and kick those punks off campus. <laughs> The survey was conducted by asking 1,501, why do they add the one in there, university students several questions regarding current events and societal norms, including are highly offensive Halloween costumes, such as blackface, a protected form of free speech on campus, or should students who wear them be punished? And the pussies uh, said, 51% said, yeah, they, sh they should be punished. It could hurt somebody's feelings. Let me tell you something. The market... The free market, okay, we live in a democracy, capital. The free market works this shit out. If you're a white fraternity guy or whatever and you want to put on blackface, take your fucking chances. Go wander around campus. We police ourselves. Somebody will fuck you up and uh, or laugh at it. Maybe the fucking, you know, maybe someday we'll be to the point where, yeah, that was funny in 1930 or whatever the fuck. But, uh, you know, we police ourselves. But to be punished, so I want to know what the punishment is. If Raz puts on white face and comes in here, what should I? <laughs> what? What? He should pay me more. If yeah, I put on white. there you go. I have to <laughs> fucking pay him more. Improve my credit. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell me 40 mules or 40 acres and a mule isn't enough, Raz? For the love. I said, I said that during the uh, roast. Warren Sapp was on the. 
And I go, yeah, I was uh, backstage before the show. I heard Warren Sapp uh, arguing with his agent on the phone. I heard him say, uh, they said 40 mules and a fucking 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> and Warren just looked at me like, you know what? I can fucking crush you like a bug, you guinea. He pretended to laugh. That's what we do in this country. But uh, it was a row, so, you know. And nobody asked me to be punished and shit. Uh, uh, the number of students saying others should be punished for offensive Halloween costumes is even higher at el elite universities, with 58% of Ivy League pussies saying that wearing offensive costumes should have consequences. Why? You're going to wear one when you graduate from Yale or Harvard or Penn. You guys all wear costumes because you're the phoniest fucks on the planet. You go out there with your nice suits on and whatever the fuck, and then uh, you'll commit your white-collar crimes and pretend you're an upstanding, you know what. California students, does this surprise anybody? Uh, California students are on high alert when it comes to insensitive Halloween costumes. I don't know why they would be. You live in California, you're surrounded by people. Guys in sombreros, fucking, you know, black dudes with their do-rags, fucking Pakistanis with whatever the fuck they wear. The b fucking Muslims with their hijabs. That's what California looks like. So why would a fucking Halloween costume offend you? The real thing should. Oh, Nick, that's ridiculous. Uh, but of course, the, the California students said uh, three out of five students within California State University system are in favor of punishment for offensive costumes. Do you think we have fucking yeah, failed yeah, these kids? Yeah, yeah. The poll comes just days after a separate poll found that a majority of U.S. young adults believe that hate speech, this is even worse, should not be protected under the First Amendment, with 47% of those between the ages of 18 and 34 saying that jail time would be an appropriate punishment for those who use it. Just fucking move to China now, you dumb fucks. Jail time. First of all, there's no, you know, there's no such thing as hate speech, right? This is just speech. Do you understand that? No such thing. There's hate crimes. There's no such thing as hate speech. The First Amendment there is to protect what? Unpopular speech, which is what separates us from the rest of the third world shitholes, as Trump would say. These guys can't even say grab a pussy in Guadalajara. <laughs> grab, it's a perfect word. It's just proof, though, uh, how the education system has failed. It was once the envy of the planet, the United States. But then the lefties got their claws into it. The fucking, you know, whatever. The far left libs. And, um, and now the kids are retarded. They don't know anything about anything about the country and what we've done as far as good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go back to the jewel since I found that it's really bad. For I, I, I love how they mention mint. That's the only fucking one I chose every time. <laughs> mint. I loved it. But the Paul, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. They're in trouble, too. The fucking guy. We didn't talk about that yesterday, did we? Guys, anybody paying attention? Huh? Raz, what are you doing? Watching porn over there? <laughs> uh, anyhow, free speech and, uh, you know. It always affects us comics more. I love that the, we're, we're at the center of these debates. That's, I love what I do for a living. And I love that Chappelle's out there fucking mocking these people. And uh, my problem is there's a lot of comics out there who are going, yeah, this is ridiculous. But you know what? Their politics and how they voted, because I sat around the table at the Comedy Cellar, and they helped create this environment. Uh, so they, some of them should keep their yap shut. Speaking of great comedians, this was sad. John Witherspoon. You guys know him, right? He played Ice Cube's dad in all the Friday movies. Funny guy, nice guy. I, I met him once in L.A. at the Comedy Store. He was always on the David Letterman show. They were tight. They came up together. Uh, he passed away yesterday, unexpectedly. Although, you know, when a black guy passes away at 77, is that unexpectedly? Not at all. Right, Raz? That's like, what the fuck? 77? He cheated death for 20 years. Um, but that really made me sad because I really like this guy. He's so goddamn, what a great comedic actor he was. Uh, he passed away yesterday. Uh, you know him from the Friday movies, Wayne, Wayne's Brothers show, Tracy Morgan show. Died uh, yesterday. Um, anyways, Ice Cube said, uh, life won't be as funny without him. Uh, he started out as a comic at the comedy store in L.A. in 74. Oh, my God. I started in 87. 
So I'll be dying in about three weeks. Mitzi Shore, the owner, made him an MC. Uh, it was a period when other future stars were also starting. Letterman star, Leno, that's when they all came out. And this guy was great. He was great in everything he did. I was on Twitter yesterday, and somebody put a compilation up of him eating in every scene he did in different movies. And I was belly. I go, why? I didn't. It didn't say anything about him dying. I just watched that, and then I picked up the paper an hour later. But we have uh, we have a little montage of some of his uh, work. And here it is. A little tribute to a great guy. I love this scene. Ice cream playing an angry black guy. What a stretch. Ain't nothing in this house. That's the guy who sits next to me in a plane. Every play, time I come in the peanuts. kitchen, you in the kitchen. That's the guy at the movie theater behind me. In the goddamn refrigerator, eating up all the food, all the chicken, all the pig feet. <laughs> pig my dinner, feet. My mashed potatoes. They had a good old gravy I like, and them biscuits I can sop that gravy in. You ate all it up. You drink up all the milk. Don't care what kind of milk it is. You don't care. Two percent, three percent buttermilk, patent milk. Hold a cow in a patent milk can. I bet you eat that too. What's wrong with you? I'm hiding my grapes. You eat up all my grapes. Man. Now, when I went to bed last night, man, I didn't I tell you to take out the trash? Yeah. So why didn't you do it? I fell asleep. I wish you were sleeping right now. I'll knock you upside your head with a left hook, make your ass wake up, and take out that damn trash. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? That's my dad and me. I'm throwing this away. We ain't even got no milk. You better eat that damn cereal. <laughs> you ain't got no damn milk. I ain't got that bitch. When I was coming up, we didn't have milk, cereal, a bowl to eat in, spoon, fork, knife, no napkins or nothing. You do like this. What mock with your hand like that? You ever do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rest in peace, John. Funny son of a gun. Letterman used to have him on like every other week on his, uh, they were pretty tight, you know. Um, you know, came from Detroit. I'm sure he didn't grow up rich. Good for him. Good life. Somebody who should die, though, is this fucking whistleblower cocksucker who apparently is finally exposed. And you're saying, well, what took so long? Well, the media. The, the media, who, I'm, I'm not going to explain this again, who works hand in hand with the Democrat Party. It's the, the mainstream media is their propaganda arm. That's how it works. And that's why everybody, apparently everybody in D.C. knows who it was. But why do us, pu the people in the public, the people who this country is run by, essentially, how come we're the last to know? Well, look at Rachel Maddow. Look at fucking uh, Don, uh, I like cock lemon. Look at uh, NBC, ABC, CBS. They're all in cahoots. And uh, whistleblower expose. Uh, you know who he was close to? And this is right in the headline. Joe Biden. Fucking Brennan. Crooked as they come. Adam Schiff's staff. He was a DNC operative. You know what his name is? This is what the Italians call a disgraziar. He was a Ginzaloon. Eric uh, Charamella as a class 2004 Connecticut prep student. Ooh. Yeah, that's the best picture we can get of him. Look at him, that smarmy fucking like a Ugh. prep student. How can you be Italian, live in Connecticut, and be a yuppie prep student? You must have money. He later moved on to Yale, where all the devils come from, and, uh, and the White House. Now he's at the center of the impeachment storm. I don't know who would like this piece of garbage. Um, where's my goddamn thing? Uh. Hey, yo. Fucking rat anyway. His whole family's all rats. Would have brought to be a rat. Yeah, he did. Well played, Nick. Look for the sound drop for nine minutes. It's really comedic timing. More than two months after the official filed his complaint, uh, pretty much all that's known public about him is that he is a CIA analyst who at one point was detailed to the White House and, and now is back working at the CIA. Of course, he was an Obama, uh, Obama appointee. Uh, the name of, the, uh, of a government official fitting that description, Eric Charamella, has been raised privately. His name's been raised privately in impeachment depositions, according to officials with direct knowledge of the proceedings, as well as in at least one open hearing held by a House committee not involved in the impeachment inquiry. Fearing uh, their anonymous witness could be exposed, 
Democrats this week blocked Republicans from asking more questions about him and intend to redact his name from all depositions and uh, transcripts. How is that? I mean, how the fuck is that even allowed? You're out of order. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. They're out of order. By the way, the big vote is this morning. We should probably have Fox News on. We're still new in the studio. But the big vote is uh, this morning with the Democrats in the House, whether they're going to move forward with it. And they, it's not even definite. I can't wait to go home and watch C-SPAN. <laughs> uh, federal documents reveal that the 33-year-old uh, Cheramella, a registered Democrat, what else, rat bastard, held over from the Obama White House. Do you understand? Oh, I, I can't. Uh, previously, l l listen to who he worked with previously, Joe Biden. And former CIA director John Brennan, who's the most crooked uh, CIA director in history, a vocal critic of Trump who helped initiate the Russian collusion investigation of the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. You're a wormy cut sucker, you know that? Joe Biden invited Cheramella to a state lunch with an Italian premier, also invited Brennan, Comey, and Clapper. Is that enough evidence right there that this guy is a uh, fucking anti-Trump? DNC operative, you guys are just crooked to the fucking bone. So so is the right, but not one tenth of what you guys are. You're just filthy. I hope that doesn't cost me fans. Mm. Furthermore, Chair Miller left his National Security Council posting in the White House uh, West Wing in the in mid 2017 amid concerns. Listen to this about negative leaks to the media. He has since returned to the CIA, head, CIA headquarters. He was accused of working against Trump and leaking against Trump, said a former NSC official speaking on conditions of anonymity to discuss the intelligence matters. Also, Chair Amella huddled for guidance with staff of House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff. He was huddling with Adam Schiff's staff, including former colleagues also held over from the Obama era, whom Schiff's office had recently recruited from the NSC. Again, this... You're going to find out in a while, I don't know how long, the whole deep state thing, that's all going to come up. Fucking Obama knew about all that shit. That makes Watergate look like a fucking popcorn fart, okay? But once again, because the media colludes with the DNC, you guys, and we don't know anything about, but you're going to find out. Devin Nunes has, he's a sneaky little prick. Put him on it. Uh... <laughs> Uh, listen to this. Uh, Chair Miller worked with a Democratic National Committee uh, operative who dug up dirt on the Trump campaign. This is the whistleblower, supposedly, allegedly, during the 2016 election, inviting her into the White House for meetings, former, Weiss, former White House colleagues said. The operative, and I know I'm reading a lot here, but it's very interesting, Alexandra Chalupa. Didn't we just have Chalupas for lunch? Honest to God, there's a Taco Bell like three minutes away. A Ukrainian-American who supported thick ankle dog face whore Hillary Clinton led an effort to link the Republican campaign to the Russian government. This guy is filthy, this so-called whistleblower. What an understated term for a fucking crooked, uh, a guy who helped lead the uh, deep state thing. Uh, he, so she has, she has ties to the Russian government. And she was trying to, to the Ukrainian government, and she's trying to, you know, work alongside Schiff and other scumbags to make it look like, uh, you know, Russia was involved with Trump's election. He knows her. He had her in the White House, said one former co-worker who requested anonymity to d discuss the uh, sensitive matter. Alexandra Chalupa, DNC Oppo Research, was invited to the Obama White House by who else? Cheramella. Documents confirm the DNC opposition research at researcher attended at least one White House meeting with Cheramella in November 2015. Boy, this is smelling like a anchovy snatch. Who's with me? You don't hear Hannity say that much. Why? Because we were saying that in eighth grade when I was uh, 15 years old. Uh, she visited the White House with a number of Ukrainian officials lobbying the Obama administration for aid for Ukraine. It gets deeper and deeper. Do you see the connection, folks? Joe Biden running for president. Involved with Ukraine. Trump wants to invest. In this guy here goes back to Russia. <laughs> She's a Ukrainian American. Oh, my God. It's getting filthy. I mean, him blowing the whistle, that's like the most innocent thing he's done in the last five years. Uh, with Chair Mella's name long under wraps, interest in the intelligence analyst has become so high that a handful of former colleagues compiled a roughly 40-page research dossier on him. You think we'll ever see that? 
A classified version of the document is circulating on Capitol Hill and briefings have been conducted based on it. One one brief Republican has been planning to unmask the whistleblower in a speech on the House floor. How the uh, how the hell how the hell is this a legitimate impeachment? I mean, this is how it all started. Remember the, the July 25th phone call? Trump talking to the president of Ukraine, right? That's what this is all about, the impeachment. Of how is this fucking legit? This guy has been huddling with Adam Schiff, who's appointed himself like prosecutor of this whole hearing, and he's a fucking, uh, he's a phony. Everyone knows, <laughs> listen to this. Fred, uh, Fred Flights, Trump's advisor, said everyone knows knows who he is everyone know who he says cnn knows the washington post knows the new york times knows congress knows the white house knows. even the president knows who he is said flights former cia analyst and national security advisor to trump who has fielded dozens of calls from how so how is this not crooked from the beginning democrats attor- democrat attorneys meanwhile have warned that outing him would put him and his family at risk of harm Although the government security personnel have been assigned to protect him, so that's kind of a lie. They're hiding him, Flight said. They're hiding him because of his political bias. A CAI officer specializing in Russia and Ukraine, Chair Mello, was detailed over to the National Security Council from the agency in the summer of 2015, working under Susan Rice, Obama's national security advisor. He also worked closely with former vice president. This guy couldn't be any dirtier or any, any more inside. Right? Go ahead, Chucky. He definitely looks like a blower, if you ask me. I didn't ask you. What's a blower? He looks like a fag. Yeah, so do you, but we don't say that to you, to your face, until you drive away in your gay blue sports car. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Rich, something behind you. Anyways, uh, you really are. You are fucking the silliest bastard. Yeah, come on over here. Have you, have you, has anybody, you want to see how I yell at all the time? Here he is. Black people, you think white people are the devil? You got that right. Look at this asshole. Look, he's even fucking this up. There you go. That added a lot to the show. Wait till I have Raz come over here, dressed like Mrs. America. Is that even anything? Okay, back to this. This is interesting. I don't give a shit if you think I'm reading too much. This is, it has to be, this is, uh, th- these details are very important. Uh, listen, li- listen to this. Chair Mello worked on Ukrainian policy issues for who? Joe Biden in 2015 and 2016, when the vice president uh, was President Obama's point man for Ukraine. A Yale graduate, Chair Mello is said to speak Russian and Ukrainian, as well as Arabic. He had been assigned to the, uh, the uh, National Security Council by Brennan, who, again, is, you know, his past. He was held over into the Trump administration and he- headed the Ukraine desk at the NSC, eventually transitioning to the West Wing in June of 2017. He was moved over to the front office to temporarily fill a vacancy, said a former White House official, where he saw everything and read everything. The official added that it soon became clear among NSA staff uh, members, Chair Mella opposed the new Republican president's foreign policies. My recollection of Eric is that he was very smart. These are his co-workers and very passionate, particularly about Ukraine and Russia. That was his thing, Ukraine, he said. He didn't exactly hide his passion with respect to what he thought was the right thing to do with Ukraine and Russia. Well, that's not his job, is it, when he works for us? These unelected bureaucrats. You're supposed to leave your bias at the fucking door. Another one. How much more evidence do you need between the Russian hoax and this that these people will do anything to hold on to power? Uh, His viewpoints were at odds with the president's policies. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was a whistleblower, an official said. Um, You get the point. All right. There's more. Chair Amella allegedly argued that President Putin suggested that President Trump fire Comey, the report said. In the days after Comey's firing, this presidential action was used to further political, uh, to further political and media calls for the stand-up of the special counsel to investigate the Russia collusion. This guy is as filthy as they come. Who the fuck said that? Uh, Chair Amella said. Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toed cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? And ironically, he left the White House right after uh, the Mueller 
Mueller was appointed special counsel. What a filthy little party you've got going on. <laughs> Rich, do you believe this shit? I don't believe this shit. This stuff used to go down in Haiti and shit. Who cares about that? Uh, one more little political, you know, uh, Obama's out there now. Uh, Obama, it says, Obama slates wokeness uh, that's not activism. So he's kind of poo-pooing uh, on a woke, you know, the, the young lefties, uh, the Michael Chase of the world that are so woke and, uh, and uh, Obama's uh, kind of poo-pooing on that. So that must make them feel bad. But, you know, Obama's not that. Uh, that's yeah. it, Charlie. You're not even important anymore. I don't know why that is so low. But anyways, I, I agree with Obama on this, but the problem is, go ahead, we'll play the clip and then I'll talk. You know, this, this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff, I, you should get over that quickly. The world, the world is messy. There are ambiguities. People who do really good stuff have flaws. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or used the word wrong verb or then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself because man you see how woke I was? I called you out. <laughs> Let me get on TV. Watch my show. Watch Grownish. Um, you know that's not that's not activism. That, that's not bringing about change. Uh, that's not activism. That's not bringing about change. Uh, Michelle maybe quit smoking because uh, I'm a bitch. <laughs> this is supposed to be Obama as Dracula. Looks like a Greek woman from Queens. <laughs> Did I fuck up my hair, though? Anyways... Again, I would agree with them on a lot of that, but, but, but Jesus Christ, and, and again, all these stories I do, I weigh against the backdrop of him being behind the deep state thing and spying his administration on Trump. So all the words that comes out of his mouth are, like I said, like turds, out of Pelosi's mouth, out of Adam Schiff, out of Chuck Schumer, Nadler. They're all lying cocksuckers who have done, using all their power since uh, Trump came down the escalator to get him out of there. They know they can't beat him, on policies in an election, so they want to impeach him. They know. They're nervous. They have saw these, these 23 fucking idiots who have been debating the last few months on national TV, and they're shitting their pants. Uh, that, I'm sort of digressing from what Obama said, but, uh, uh, you know, you got to do more than uh, just correct people on uh, Twitter. Uh, you got to get out there. you got to bust some white heads. Uh, when I was a, guy, a young kid, I was a uh, community organizer. you got to... Uh, you got to hate Whitey right from the bone. Now, Michelle hates Whitey. She won't tell you that. She hides it better than I do. Um, I got a feeling like, and I've said this before, he, I would like Obama if I hung out with him and played hoops and he went in for a layup, I'd kick his legs out and land on his head. And he'd be the first, first ex-president to be in a wheelchair. Um, but he's right about that. The world is a messy place. And you know who he's talking to? And by the way, the term woke, I just sort of, uh, I got to work this into my act. Yeah, you guys on the left, you woke. Isn't woke past tense? I woke up last night. Yeah, so you guys are fucking, you're still asleep. I'm awake. The right is awake. We're awake to what the media has been, how they've been fucking us in the ass for 40 years. How the colleges have turned into just, uh, you know, brainwashing uh, liberal uh, indoctrination camps. And uh, so we're awake and you're woke. I'm awake today. Uh, you woke up yesterday. Rich, would you agree with that? I mean, you're a nice white fellow who can't get laid. And your feelings, your thoughts. I like to sleep in sometimes, so I, I'm, I'm definitely late to the party. <laughs> He's got nothing. Raz, Raz looks at you out of the corner of his eye like, this guy has cancer of the fucking funny bum. <laughs> I'm late to the party and, you know, I get prayer. I'd say Rich is woke. He's got a nice sports car. He, he uses it to pick girls up at Chipotle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways, Obama, you had the right idea, but you've done too much damage for me to go, yeah, that's gonna, 
Hey, folks, this episode of the Nick DiPaolo Show brought to you by a favorite sponsor, mybookie.ag. Look, we're uh, way into football season. It's like the halfway point already, and there's no better time to bet. You like winning money? Who doesn't? I'll tell you where to put your money down at mybookie.ag. If you're trying to bet on the NFL, baseball, MMA, whatever, my bookie's got it. Not to mention the NHL and the NBA seasons uh, have already kicked off recently. So this is the month. If you're a, a sports fanatic, you like to. My bookie has faster payouts and more lines than any other sports book, period. They got parlays. They even have teaser bets. If you're looking to bet a little and win a lot, my bookie has your back. They just revamped their website. It is looking great. I encourage all of you to take a look at it if you haven't already. But here's the cool thing. Right now, if you double your first deposit, you can double your first deposit right now. Use promo code NickD to get, listen to this, 100% bonus on your initial deposit up to $1,000. Visit MyBookie online today. Excuse me. That's MyBookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E dot A-G. Don't forget to use the promo code NickD when creating your account to claim the bonus. Why do people like it? Why do my friends love this site? Because you do three things. You bet, you win if you're smart, and you get paid quickly. Dates real quick, ladies and gentlemen. You can get these at nickdip.com. Next weekend, I will be uh, on Friday and Saturday night. That's uh, November 8th and 9th. The Kansas City Comedy Club in Kansas City, Missouri. Friday, November 15th, the next week at Cortland Repertory Theater, Cortland, New York. The next night after that, the 16th at the Comedy Works, Saratoga Springs, New York. And then Friday, November 22nd, I make my debut in my new home state of Georgia, the Historic Ritz Theater in Brunswick, Georgia. Saturday, November 23rd, the Tift Theater, Tifton, Georgia. Uh, new Year's Eve, I'm back at the Tarrytown Music Hall in Tarrytown, New York. And then in 2020, uh, January 24th, I'll be at the Ridgefield Playhouse, Ridgefield, Connecticut. Saturday, February 15th, the Kelsey Theater, Lake Park, Florida. And Friday, April 3rd, the Morgan Hill Event Center in Herman, Maine. We're still working on more dates, so go to nickdip.com for your ticket information. And don't forget cameo.com. I will send, uh, at your request, I will make a personal video on my phone, send it to one of your friends roasting them, uh, sending it to your parents to tell them to leave the house. Uh, you can say happy birthday to your Grammy, uh, shit on a coworker. I can be nice. I can make somebody's day. I can break somebody's day. Uh, and I love doing it. So go to cameo.com, click on my profile, and let's uh, hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. What do we got here? Uh, what is it? Drag Queen Week? This is about the third story I've done on these fucking biological aberrations. Drag queens. I don't have a pro- You know, again, again, gay, I understand. I, I, nobody really has a problem with that shit anymore. But when, when you want to, you know, you're 680 pounds, you get a beard, and you're wearing a fucking dress talking to six-year-olds. I got a problem with you, motherfucker. <sighs> Let's... Put, put, put up this. Why, would, if you're a parent, look at this. If you're a parent, why would you subject your kids to this? Oh, so they can be tolerant of these people when they grow up. Oh, uh, where are they growing up? In West Hollywood? They're going to run into one of these people every 40 years. Because, again, they make up 0.0008% of the population. Look at this. Imagine if Vince Lombardi was alive. Go ahead. Play this cheese dick. What do you want to be, sweetheart? You want to be a Spider-Man? That's a wow. Was that a boy in a dress? <laughs> or a princess Spider-Man? You never know. You can be anything you want. I'm a drag queen. You're a what? You're a drag queen? You're a fucking pasta-eating carbo overload tub of fucking cheese is what you are. You're a freak. You're mentally ill. And the dumb, I feel bad for the fuck, look at these fucking, did you hear, little boy, or you could be a princess. Kid's like, no, I want to be an astronaut. No, you're going to be a princess, bitch. Can you imagine? Yeah, my dad would take me to that. When I was a kid, the priest at the, our church was right at the top of our street, and there was a, a priest, the pastor, used to walk down our street every once in a while. He tried to invite me and my brother to a Celtics game, and my old man's like cutting the grass, fucking, my old man with his fucking, you could call it homophobia. 
He comes over, <laughs> gets right in the middle. He goes, uh, what's going on? <laughs> in the past, well, I was going to invite uh, Nick and Greg to the, uh, the Celtics game. And my father goes, no, you're not. Fucking. <laughs> and he puts his arms around us, walks us away. <laughs> Just left the pastor in the street. Me and my, well, my mother had to go, my mother went to church every Sunday, had to face that. Uh, but I think looking back on it, I, I owe my dad a big thanks. Uh, I could have been getting cornholed in the men's room as uh, Robert Parrish had a triple double. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. It's disgusting, though. I, I'm trying not to be a homophobic, but come on, that's Throw ridiculous. Your son looks like a fag to me. Yes, he does. <laughs> you can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Stop taking your kids to these things. You, you see the brainwashing, Raz Rich? Do you see the brainwashing? The, uh, just a uh, taller, diversity, tolerant. <laughs> so what? A grown man showed his cock to my four-year-old daughter, you know, at elementary school. And uh, you and I are all deplorable for not liking this type of shit. China has some stuff right, and I would uh, open prisons for the drag queens. Just a few of them. There's some good ones. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to be nice, but I want to not be nice. Here's a future drag queen coming up, in my opinion. Uh, I guess there's a new uh, Star Wars thing coming out. Uh, a new Star Wars. Uh, what happened there, Rez? I got a little loud or something. A new Star Wars uh, movie. Why, why are we having so much problems with the sound? It's good now, but uh, it's the hardest thing doing this. I don't know. Um, why am I acknowledging it? I don't know. Uh, Star Wars, I guess. I was never a Star Wars fan, and I know that makes me an oddity in the country. Raz, Star Wars? Yep. You liked it? I, uh, I tried watching for the first time about five years ago, and it seemed like a bowling trophy talking to a vacuum cleaner. That's all I got out of it. And, and I, I just can't, I, I, I can't suspend my disbelief enough. Do you know what I'm saying? I just can't. The, the world interesting enough. I don't need sci-fi fucking nerdy. Ooh, it's a war. Okay, it's a war only in space. Fucking uh, Darth Vader is the fucking... Of course, they made him the bad guy. He's black. It's fucking very racist. Uh, but I just... I never, I never... I didn't get into it, okay? Sorry, I was popular. I was, uh, I was kind of a different, weird little kid. I liked girls and football and shit. I was kind of a real fucking oddity. Uh, but anyways, uh, zillions of people. It's got to be a great movie. Because zillions, well, then again, a lot of people like Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Let's uh, let's play this guy Eric Butts. Who this kid? He he. Every time Star Wars comes out, he comes on the internet to kind of critique it. He pretends at the beginning of the clip. I don't even know if we're going to show the part. He goes, "Me and my wife just had an anniversary or some shit." Yeah. So he's just he's letting you know that he's not gay by making that comment. I'm just breaking down the tape as I see it. But uh, here's what bothers me about him. He's he, here. He is watching the new trailer of the new Man Mandorian. Oh, that music. This is like rich watching. <laughs> those those do bags? No, those are do bags. They sounded like a Break it up a little. Chills. What? 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 But bounty Jeez. hunting is a complicated profession. Here's my problem. Pause. I don't care that he's a nerd and he's definitely gay. Again, that doesn't bother me. It's how phony he is. Even nerds don't get this. Look, do you see any sense? It's like fucking, it's like watching Liz Warren shake hands at the Iowa State Fair. <laughs> What's that, a funnel cake? <laughs> You're being phony. Sit back. I don't want to hear from you. Sit back. You get this dumb look on your face. It, it doesn't need anything. He's full of shit. And, and who wants to put a bet in, I'd say, a year or two, we find out that he was best friends with Jared from Subway, and he's got like nine uh, kids' skeletons under his front porch. Go ahead. 
Was that Mos Eisley? Was that Watto? No, your son looks like a fat to me. Talk it all over, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can act like a man! What's the matter with you? All right, enough. I can't take it. I can't fucking take it. I never got that shit. Even Disney. What was Disney? Uh, what was the Herbie the Love Bug and all that shit? We'd go to school on Monday morning, right? And all the kids would be talking about that. And me and my brother would be talking about the brawl between the Bruins and Canadians. We were raised on violence like good fucking suburban kids. <laughs> A flying car. And my uncle said, you want to go see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? No, it's a car. Cars don't fucking fly. This is 1971. Come on, Unc. I just can't suspend my disbelief. I just, I, you know, whatever. But you don't pick on this kid because uh, he's going to die anyways. He's got <laughs> Eric Butts. Can you make that up? Can you make it up? That's it. His name's Butts. Should change his first name to Loves. I mean, for the love of Jesus. But, but he's being phony there. Lucas probably hired him, right? He should do that with me. You put on porn, I can review. <laughs> oh, is that a pink asshole? Mm -hmm. oh, look at that fucking roping load laying on her face. Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> Start crying. <laughs> Seika. <laughs> Look at he, he he so wants to say something right. Rich, you know what? Not, you're not saying anything the rest of the show. You got nothing to add. You have a lot of work to do, watching Facebook and all the other shit. Tommy gave you a bunch of stuff. Look at him. He just he's dying to get on the mic. You're not gonna be famous from this show. You don't wanna be? Why do you inject every fucking horse shitty thought that comes through you? <laughs> it just happens. Go ahead, say it. I'll let you. You've been good actually. Go ahead. That's how I imagine you look when you watch the Patriots. Can you talk into the mic? How long you been in radio? P put the button down. Go ahead. That's how I imagine you look when you watch the Patriots. You're not talking into the mic. I'm not hearing you. Hold the button down. That's how I imagine you look when you're watching the Patriots. <laughs> Fucking Jason, I had a great cricket sound effects. He replaces it with, because whatever, with, with this thing. It sounds like a referee's whistle. Anyways. I've had it with the world. Here's what Jewel allegedly thinks of its customers. Jewel's marketing strategy over the years, we have to work on the fucking... Leave it, Raz. Don't you, you, it gets in my head. Jules marketing. Now it's all fucking raspy. Test. Jules marketing. It sounds good on this side. Yeah, but it's okay. But it, uh, it sounds. Jules marketing strategy over the years has essentially positioned the company as the cool girl of the tobacco industry. Jewel isn't like the other girls that want to get people hooked on cigarettes. Oh, this is such a clever metaphor or simile, whatever, uh, which will eventually kill them. Jewel wants to hold its customers' hands and lead them gently toward a better uh, and claims to be healthier lifestyle. Its branding and advertising has centered around the idea that cigarettes are bad and Jewel is good. Make the switch. The company encouraged that until a month ago when the company pivoted away from the slogan in a series of uh, internal uh, dis decisions, apparently. Um, you fucking hypocrite. A lawsuit filed. A lawsuit filed this week by uh, Siddharth Bray. Hey, a form. Are there any John Smiths in the fucking news? A former Jewel executive makes it seem like the company never actually believed in any of its own moral uh, signaling. The lawsuit claims that former Jewel CEO Kevin Burns brushed off concerns that his company uh, was shipping at least a million contaminated pods earlier this year, dismissing his customers as drunk people who vape like mofos. <laughs> BuzzFeed uh, News reports uh, Breja alle alleges he was wrongfully terminated in March 2019 for raising concerns about the shipment of bad pods. And I know this because I use these fuckers, and some of them would leak. 
You get oil in your mouth. It would, you know. According to details from the lawsuit obtained by BuzzFeed News, in February 2019, uh, Brager protested selling pods that were nearly a year old by the time they were shipped. He asked the company to at least include an expiration or manufacture date on the packaging. Burns allegedly shot this down, saying, Half our customers are drunk and vaping like mofos. Who the fuck is going to notice the quality of our pods? <laughs> nice guy. You smug cocksucker. Fuck you. Posts from the uh, subreddit routinely compare clarity of pod juice and complain of anything suspect like leaking pods or pods that are already brown, signifying age, when opened. So they do pay attention to this shit, even if they are drunk or high. I mean, when I was sucking on it, all of a sudden my lips get all oily and they're on fire. I'm sure that's good for you. <laughs> but how about the CEO? They're all, they're all fucking drunk and high as a motherfucker. <laughs> At least somebody's being honest. Um, so, uh, but not, now there's some, I got some statistics here of just how fucking bad they might or might not be for you. Um, a new study released to Monday, stop it, uh, by researchers at Duke University found that, listen, certain e-cigarette liquids contains extremely high levels of a chemical that has been banned as a synthetic food additive by the FDA since last year. <laughs> I'm smoking and, and, and doing the vape. The chemical called uh, pul- Puligon, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right, occurs naturally as an essential oil in plants, including peppermint and pennyroyal, and was uh, used in its synthetic form to add a minty flavor to things like candy and alcoholic drinks. But despite all the evidence, the pugilon is carcinogenic and causes liver toxicity. And I heard that. Some people's liver, a kid told me that he was using the jewel and his, the, his liver enzymes went up. Uh, research has found, again, this is, uh, research has found the chemical is present in mint and menthol flavored e-cig liquid levels far, far above a, a safe uh, threshold. Well, that's not good news for me because that was my favorite flavor. I'll tell you that much. Son of a whore! But obviously, this is once again uh, white people trying to poison black people because we all know who likes their mint and menthols. <laughs> you want to get a laugh in a comedy when I bum a cigarette from the audience? I'll you know bum it and it'll be menthol. I'll go, this is menthol. You're white. What the fuck? Every time the people go crazy. <laughs> I happen to like the fucking menthol myself. Uh, researchers compared uh, pugilon levels in a mint and in, in mint and menthol e c cig liquid to levels in menthol and cigarettes. At all levels of daily consumption, pugilon exposure from vape pods are significantly higher than exposure from cigarettes, with rates ranging from 44 to 1,600 times higher. What the fuck? At whatever rate of consumption we looked at, we found that uh, Puligon le- levels were at a threshold that could cause potential health threat. Really? Counselor? Counselor? Vape liquid could be escaping that same scrutiny because it's impossible to know whether manufacturers are using the natural or synthetic form of the chemical, which only shows even more need for uh, some kind of regulation. Regulation. Anyways, go ahead, dum dum. Smoking jewels will turn everyone into whistleblowers. You know what? You're not going to. That's your last word ever on air. <laughs> Let's break that down. Since you have a serious cancer, jewels will make everybody whistleblower. Explain. Wheezing. So people are supposed to make the leap from you saying whistleblow to wheezing. Well, that's close enough. No, it isn't. That's my point. That's what you that's why you I've been explaining this a thousand times. Here's a joke. Here's the setup. Right? It's like your evil can evil. This is a ramp you take off on. This is the the people that are supposed to laugh. Let me finish shit face. This is the ramp you have to land on. Okay? If you don't give it enough juice, the motorcycle. In other words, enough information in the setup of the joke, you're not going to be able to make the connection. You keep landing in the Snake River, <laughs> face down. You're, every time you make a joke, you're evil Knievel at Caesar's Palace. 
your evil Knievel in London hitting that last bus. <laughs> the people in the audience need a little info. You fu they're not fucking Kreskin. I mean, Kreskin, oh my God, there's a reference from the 1800s. Uh, anyways, finally tonight, what should I do? The story about how you poop can help train artificial intelligence or technology bias against black patients runs rampant in hospitals. Raz? Either, but don't forget about your pictures either. Oh, go ahead. Put my picture. Here's me as an asshole in college. <laughs> Tommy showed me these and he goes, who's that? That's, <laughs> that's, why am I next to the guy from Hall and Oates? <laughs> that's fucking creepy. <laughs> See the kid on the far right with his eyes half closed? That's uh, a kid, Brad. This kid was the funniest, smartest motherfucker. He did all my computer homework for me. He, he would do anything for attention. He'd go home for Christmas break. He'd come back. He'd be 40 pounds heavier. We're not exaggerating. We'd be sticking a head. He'd be walking down the hall. We'd all be sticking a head out. Our dorm room was looking at his ass. <laughs> so what we did was move all his room, his bed, all his furniture into the... That's a men's room. And we moved this shit in there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> look at the guy with the mustache. <laughs> this looks like porn. Male pornography. And why I'm in the, I was a punk. I'm in the fucking, Brad should have been in the bed. Of course, it was my idea. So I said, no, let me get in the middle of that. Look, I had one chin back then. And there's Kevin Kavanaugh, a blonde kid to my left who uh, strangled 12 girls. He's in prison. Uh, no, I'm kidding. He's actually a fucking great guy. <laughs> Super chat. Put up the other, yeah, do we put up the other picture? That's me studying. <laughs> it's the only time I get into pro wrestling because a lot of the kids on the floor loved it. And we used to go in the study and we'd move out the furniture and body slam each other for hours on end. And uh, look how skinny I was. Anyways, take that down. Super chat, go ahead, Rich. Uh, Patrick Doerr said, I wish frat boys would start giving girls were hypnol so uh, campus feminists would stop yelling through a blowhorn for six hours. Yeah, I don't know what any, I don't even know what that means. What's hit, what, what kind of drug? For hypnol. Do you know what that is? Date rape drug. I give it out often. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. To fucking Cub Scouts. Um, you know, fucking roofies. I didn't know. It's in the paint on toys. When we buy toys from China, I told you this. I think I've mentioned it on the show before. Raz doesn't know. We, we, you know, we buy toys from China. They, they, just, they did a study. The paint has the date, date rape drug in the paint. And I said some joke on stage when the story was topical. I said, uh, I get caught the other night at a comedy club. I was stirring a girl's drink with a Barbie doll. Um, and so <laughs> Anyways, terrific fun, wasn't it? Uh, Jeffrey Hutchins said, whistleblower looks like he could deep throat a fence post while clipping his toenails. Yeah. Wow, is he taking comedy lessons from you? <laughs> Not bad. What was his name, Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Not bad, Jeffrey. I'll give you a C. And uh, B1 Untrauma said, laughing my ass off, enjoying the show. Uh, thank you. That's the kind of chat I like. <laughs> Somebody blowing me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not doing these stories. Fuck it. I'm, t I'm tired of talking about uh, how your poop can help train artificial intelligence. That's, am I supposed to be afraid? I keep hearing people worried about artificial intelligence and robots taking over. Don't we build the shit? So what am I supposed to be afraid of? They act, there's a theory out there that they're actually going to become conscious of each other. and t t It's a bunch of nonsense. I'm guessing it'll be a movie in a year and fucking Eric Butts will be going, ah, ah, it wants to rape me. Ah, let me take off my leather chaps. Anyways, uh, that is it for today, ladies and gentlemen, and for the week. I, we thank you so much, Patreon members, for uh, joining in. And we've got some big things coming in November that are going to make you very excited. Rich will be fired, replacing him with a 18-year-old Native American girl. Anyways, <laughs> how's the job search going, Rich? I saw you, you filled out a thing for Arby's yesterday, right? Yeah, Arby's going to be a great job. All right, good for you. Maybe you can learn how to speak into a mic at Arby's. <laughs> All right, that is it for the week. Uh, NickDip.com tour. I'll see you guys in Kansas City next weekend, but I'll talk to you before then Monday. Uh, remember, you guys think it. I will say it. You're very welcome. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. Happy Halloween. <laughs>